This is Brother Sharon John. Sister Delia de la Cruz. This is Sister Linda. We're so happy to have Sister Abigail on the keyboard. We got Brother Barack on the guitarra. We got Brother Alfred on the drums. Early this morning in prayer, this this song came to me, and I asked them to perform it for me today. But they said, "No, you have to perform with us." So we're going to kind of do our best, to, and we will start with the chorus. That that's for me to help me get going. Okay. You are the song leader. <laughs> Leave it there.
bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. In other words, what that is saying, the soul that sinned shall die, not the Father of the soul, or the Son that did the sin, or not the Son's not going to die because the Father sinned. But whoever is the sinner shall surely die. And, and the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all their sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. And I'd like to go to now uh, 1 John. Chapter 1, verse 5, beginning. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. There's no, we've got to send a little bit everyday business with God. In him there is no darkness at all. Okay. And if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not have the truth. Remember our lesson, The War of the Worlds? Go to It's Greek to Me on YouTube. Lesson three. Amen. There is no neutral position. You're either in darkness or you're in the light. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all of our sins. Do you see the condition there? 
if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have the pronomium. We have the privilege of being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. But you can't be walking in darkness and be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ as long as you walk in the darkness. The blood and dark don't go together, but the light and the blood work together. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. He's our judge. I mean our, our, our lawyer, our attorney. But he's also the judge. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Praise God. Father, this is a blessed day today. Your hand is all over this service. Your presence, God, has been flowing like a river in this house today. Lord, we come into the Word of God and the message, Lord, that you've delivered into our heart. And I pray, God, that you will speak. I pray, God, that you will take these words and make them to become spirit and life to your people. For I, as a man, have nothing to add to this people, Lord Jesus, to your church. God, but you, O oh Lord, if you will speak by the oracles of God, by the Holy Ghost, dear Lord God, then we can be fed, and we can be edified, and Lord, and multiplied. And so I pray that you do this today, in the holy name of Jesus we ask. Amen. Shake hands with somebody and say, I'm glad I'm in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I didn't say exchange business cards. I said, just... <laughs> I, I feel today a, 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 a seriousness about the, the message today. By my sight, I, I see no good reason for what I'm going to preach other than an exhaustion. Jesus Christ but sometimes preventative maintenance is better than a pound of cure they say amen an ounce of prevention is more worth more than a pound of cure so uh, listen to what we have to say today if, it, if I see you going to sleep well then I know I'm finished okay so but a little amen here or there, or raise your hand, that would be nice. Let me know that you feel it. You're getting it. Praise God. Uh, there was a family not too long ago on vacation. And they stopped in the state of Kentucky. And in Kentucky, they have a lot of caves, spelia. And so this, they had a big sign on the highway, you know, come to the cave, you know, and they gave some details about it and all. So this family said, oh, let's go look at the cave. And the kids, oh, let's go in the cave. Never been in a cave. And so they stop and uh, they get in a little group. There's a group of people. And so they start bringing them down into the cave. In the cave, it went hard right, and it turned back and went left. It went, they went, they had to climb up a little bit, and it had to go back, and it just went by a little stream with some fish in there, and it just went all the way back in the back there. And all of a sudden, the guide, he turns off the lights. And it's pitch dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face. You can't see nothing. 
zilch, nana, nothing. And he said, if I left you here, none of you would ever find your way out of this place. You are lost in this darkness. And if I left you here for more than a few days, some of you would lose your mind. You would go sane, according to scientific studies. Just by being in the darkness day after day and in the loneliness and the quietness but not knowing which way's up or down I guess you can figure out down because that's gravity going to pull you down left, right, north, south, east, west you couldn't figure that out what would bother me I would know, I, is I'm wondering what other creatures live in here <laughs> and uh but it got quiet for a moment when he said, "You, if I left you here. And boy, the minds began to work. And uh, it wasn't too long, just a few seconds later, maybe a minute, a minute or so, and some of the kids began to cry out, Mommy, I'm scared. Mommy, I'm scared. And then after a little bit longer, then finally some adults began to cry out, I'll cut it out. Cut it out, turn it by so, you know. But the heaviness and the feeling of that darkness, it began to cause an effect upon the minds of those people. And in one day, in one way you can say it was a darkness that you could feel, and actually what you saw was darkness, because there was no light. It was the absence of light. And this made my thinking, you know, that's the condition the world is in today. The world is running to and fro blinded by darkness. They don't see it as darkness but they're chasing after their feelings, emotions, fleshly desires, wants, and they run here, and that doesn't get it for them, and they run there, and that doesn't get it for them. They go to the doctor, and the doctor gives them a Dupont or Aspirini, and that fixes them up, but don't fix them up for the next time. They've got to go, and they've got to get something a little stronger, until finally, this world is going from nicotine to alcohol and narcotics. And it's not used to narcotics and these things was a disgrace, a shame. You didn't even hear about them. But today it is normal. If you go to parties today, it's not about, you know, dunking for apples in the tub or spinning the bottle and this sorts of games like that. It's who's got the best smoke or who's got the purest cocaine. But none of it satisfies. That's why they go in deeper and deeper and deeper. They used to have a cigarette called Paul Mall. It was a long cigarette. And they advertised on the TV and they said, Paul Mall, it satisfies. Then one guy said, well, if it satisfies, why do you put 20 in a package? <laughs> it's all lies. It's like the Bible said. It's all it's lying. People lie to themselves and they're living in a, in a darkness. And... The thought that spurred my message here today was I had this feeling that God had forsaken me. I had this
this feeling like the angels had run away. And it, 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 you know what it caused me? I went to pray. I said, God, what is going on here? I, I, somehow or another, I, I lost that sense of security and assurance I feel being a part of your body. And I don't maybe it was a chip, maybe God just wanted me to have this message for today. But it sparked my thinking, you know, how horrible it would be today to be outside of the protection of God. To step out from underneath the umbrella of salvation and protection that God has provided for the believers. And we were driving down from Thessaloniki. I was going a little bit too fast. I wasn't the only one, but I was. <laughs> and, you know, I was listening to some good music and singing. And, you know, you just keep going faster and faster sometimes. And uh, all of a sudden, there was the radar man. And my, my, my wife said, I told you it was going too fast. <laughs> and we just went right on by. And the man didn't do nothing. And she said, what happened? I said, it's the angelic host around me just protecting me. <laughs> Amen. Now we laugh about it, but I believe that. Praise God. I believe that the angels are around us and they provide protection for us. I was fishing one time and in the, 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 the Gulf of Mexico, the ocean, and um, they have what we call, there's mullet, they call them some red mullet and all that, but they swim around in schools. Sometimes the water is full of phosphorus. And you can see the swim, fish when they make a move, you can, you can see they leave a contrail like. And so... We threw in our net to try and catch a bunch of them. But as soon as it splashed the water, they just, psh, like a starburst, like those firecracker words you see out of China, you know, psh, and they just went running in every direction. And the Lord said, when you get angry, that's what the angels do. They run away from you. Since that day I've been sweeter to my wife, I don't raise my voice too much. <laughs> and I, it would be horrible to know that I don't have this angelic protection. It would be horrible to know that God has removed his blessings off of my life. And it, pardon me, and I'm not. This is not a sermon today. That I'm preaching from from in here. But there was a man, a, a God, one time that he got lifted up in his own eyes too high, and he got to thinking, you know, he was what's causing the blessings in the church, and because of my ministry, everything is going so good and all that and then I said to my wife I might have said to somebody else I said he don't understand that he's up there because God brought him raised him up and if he don't wake up he's going to fall And oh God, how horrible it would be to live in this life. The conditions of the world we have today, Sister Myrna, are horrible. Signs everywhere that Jesus is soon to return. Wars and rumors of wars. There's fixing to be a great war. World War III is going to happen and, and it's going to be unbelievable carnage is going to take place. This is not a time to slip up and get out from under the protection of God's mighty hand. Amen. 
feel the darkness. Years ago, my wife and I, we were an assistant pastor in a church in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And uh, the preacher got a phone call. Some lady wanted to talk to a preacher. Well, he was busy, so he sent me. So I got my wife because it was a lady, and we went to see this lady. And uh, she began to tell us a story that you wouldn't want to hear. But she had known the Lord and she got away from God. She began to get involved in witchcraft things, uh, seance things, Ouija board things of that nature. And it got her further and further away from the real spirit into the dark spirit. And to the dark side. And she's there and she's pleading, you know, I want to get back to God but I can't find and I just can't get it. And it was a sad case. There she was. She had Her life had been crumbled down into nothing. She was, it was a, the house she was living in was filthy and she wasn't really clean. And, but you could tell at one time she was a beautiful woman. But now she's been, I've, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. I can't feel God. I can't touch God. I got trying to get back to God. My wife and I, we spent some time praying for that lady. But I said that I have to say today that the whole time we prayed, it was like an iceberg. We could not feel one drop of the presence of God praying for that lady. I only drew my conclusion she had gone too far. She had gone too far from God. I would not like to believe that there's not any hope, but it, if there was anybody without any hope, it would have, she described the definition of it. And so we left there shaking our head, and it pays to stay in the church. It pays to stay close to God. It pays to pray every day. It pays to read your Bible, to keep you connected, to keep you into the presence and the closeness and the nearness of Almighty God. The title of my message today, I believe, is I forgot what I said. It was something about darkness. The the totiplo. But anyhow, we're living in a day of darkness like we've never seen before. Um, I think some of the worst things or the things that are driving the darkness is fear. The Bible actually says that men's hearts are going to fail them because of fear. If you serve God, fear knocks on your door occasionally trying to get an entrance in to put a fear in your heart. But as soon as I, I, I sense that spirit of fear, I come to Jesus. I call on the name of Jesus. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke the fear. But fear, people don't have that power and the authority that God has given to the church. Amen. The authority to rebuke fear and say, fear... I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have no authority or, or no place here. Amen. And But it drives people to do things worse and worse and worse. And finally, I think fear leads people to, to suicide. Another thing that probably fear leads people to or is another symptom or a cause of the age is depression. Depression. Depression 
is heavy. It's a spiritual weight. It's a heaviness. And as it begins to try and cover you up, it begins to work on your mind and you keep thinking, oh, my world is coming apart. Everything I work for, I'm losing it. It's, I'm going to lose everything. You begin to think, and you sense and you see all your weaknesses. You see all your failures. And you begin to think you're nobody. And as you begin to go down in that spiral, the weight gets heavier and heavier and the darkness gets darker and darker. You're going further and further back into the cave of darkness. Loneliness, loneliness. I think sometimes loneliness, it's a real thing, but with some people I think it's perhaps a sickness. And maybe has its roots in something else because some people, you try to befriend them, but they don't want. Some people don't want people to be friends with them. They, they like their loneliness. And it's hard to help somebody like that. But it's because I think they are afraid they are not good enough. Or if they open up to have friendships, they will they will disappoint people. But all that I'm talking about, this is not the light of God. This is the darkness of the world. This is the kingdom of darkness that opposes the kingdom of light. Instead of seeing ourselves as successful, we see ourselves as failures. And everybody else we see as being successful, and we're not. I just can't help but believe today that somebody in this building has a burden. The Holy Ghost says somebody's got a burden. Somebody's got trouble. Somebody's got a load. They can't bear it alone. But for some reason or another, you forgot about Jesus in your life. And as the song said, take it to Him and leave it there. And trust. Another song came to my mind, and we all know it. If he carried the weight of the world, I know my brother, he can carry you too. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my sister that he can carry you too. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my brother that he can carry you too. You see, this weight and this burden is not your fault. But this the, the culprit for this is sin. S-I-N. Sin. Sin is the fault for your burden and your heaviness. Sin is what causes darkness to creep into your life. Sin is what causes these things 
to begin to slowly, slowly, like a cancer, eat away at the good gift that God has placed in the treasury of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you don't have the light of God and know the power of His mercy and His forgiveness, sin, it soils your soul. It saturates your minds with evilness. It strikes the conscience and it saddens the heart. It sickens the body. It sours the spirit. It seals the lips from praise. It separates from God. You see, sin is a real thing. It's not just the fantasy of people's minds. It's just not imagination. I wish that it was. It would be easy to just cast it away. But it is a real force. And it is a spiritual power that has the ability to move in on your mind. And from your mind, it begins to work into your heart. And it begins to, what the Bible says, he's a thief and a robber. And he comes and he starts stealing the good stuff out of your life. And as the darkness grows, blessings begin to leave you and angels begin to run. And you go from bad to worse. And you go from worse to even worse. And blackness comes. You see, it's sin that blinds and holds the world captive. The world, they're doing what they're doing is because of sin. Because of the power of darkness. The Antichrist and the false prophet will soon arise on the world stage and a one world government will be placed and what they call good will be bad for the people of the light. Amen. Even now, they are doing things contrary to God's Word on a worldwide basis. They're forcing things upon the world that the world don't even believe in. Sinners don't even believe in, but they're going to be made to accept and believe the preaching of darkness. Sin separates from God. It just... You think of Adam and Eve in the garden, perhaps the first instance. When they sin, the fellowship between God and man was broken. And even until this day, sin separates us from God. For the soul that sinneth, it shall die. But the soul that will turn away from their wickedness and unto righteousness, hallelujah, it shall live. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, let me remind us all today, amen, that it's walking in the light that keeps us happy. It's walking in the truth of God that's going to keep us. Don't be tempted to do that little step or to wear garments that are revealing and of the world. Don't be tempted to go back into the world from which you were dug. Hallelujah. The scripture says don't be like a dog that returns back and eats his own vomit. Hallelujah. But it's don't be tempted to do that or be drawn back because it will separate you from God. And then you'll be alone. And you're going to wake up someday and it's going to be like in that deep dark cave. It's going to be dark and it will be lonely. And your blessings will be gone. You know how many people we have in the church struggle. You had no jobs. You lost your jobs. Jobs disappeared. 
but you didn't go back into the world amen to try and make a nickel to make some money but you said I'm going to be true you come to church and you pray although the house church was full of prayer warriors people here every night praying 20 25 people sometimes amen but you know what happened you were faithful and you know what you got a job amen you got a job I'd probably say maybe 80% of our people have jobs. Amen. Praise God. It's because God protects you. And God takes care of you. Amen. Because you are faithful. You are faithful to God. Amen. Now the world don't understand. I could say that and everybody would laugh at me outside. I say, it's because our people believe God, because our people pray, and because that we all of our people have jobs. Amen. And they say, ah, you don't believe that. Do you? Ah, God, that ain't how that works. Well, okay. That's why you don't have a job, but we got jobs. I'll, I'll, I'll take the Lord's side on that one, okay? Amen. And it's not about jobs, all about jobs. But these are little things that God does for His kids. These are things that God, but it's the security of knowing that my Jesus uh, is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and He's my daddy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So sin is something we need to stay away from. Now some people, they try to rationalize and say sin is a mistake. Just a mistake. You know. But sin is not a mistake. Because the consequences are different from a mistake. If you make a mistake... Well, you can say, hey, I'm sorry. And that's it. You can clear it up. But sin, you can't do that. You can't say, oh, I'm sorry. And No, you've got to go to the cross. You've got Sin can only be covered by the blood of Jesus. Only thing, only thing, the only thing that can get rid of your sin. Talking to the preacher won't do it. I know people come talk to the preacher and they try to counsel. They want you to, they won't the preacher to try and make them feel okay. But you can't make them feel okay if they sin. Only the blood of Jesus can do that. You have to go and get under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, well, my sin's a little sin. Well, that's all it takes. Just a little sin will keep you out of the kingdom of God. It said in him there is no darkness at all. Brother Strickland, I don't know why God has me teaching on this today, talking on this today, but I'm, I'm sure. There's some needs in the house. Hallelujah. I couldn't bear the thought of having to live separated from God. Amen. In today's world. There's no... I know the Catholics used to say there were menial and venial sins. You know, there's not so bad sins and then there's real bad sins. And the, uh, I guess in human reasoning and thinking you can say so. But a sin is a sin. And if you open the door for a little sin, the little sin is going to grow and get to be a bigger sin. You, you've all heard the school teachers talk about the lie. You take a little bitty lie. And after a while, you got to tell a lie to cover the lie. And after a while, you got to tell a bigger lie to cover the other two lies. The first thing you know, you're a big liar. <laughs> In today's world, let me just talk here a little bit. In today's world, lying... It's normal. I mean, everybody lies. You don't know who to believe today because you know they lie so much. And because everybody's lying, it's hard to determine who's the liar. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Used to when somebody lied, you ah, you could pick it up just like that. They're not because they were few liars. But today everybody lies. Not the saints of God I hope 
But the temptation's there to try and let in a little bit of darkness by telling a lie. If I told a little bitty lie, well then, you know, I might get this good job. Or if I stretch the truth a little bit, I might, you know, uh, these people would be my friends. You know, my resume for my, you know, I graduated from Harvard University with a degree in law, then I went to Yale, then I got another a doctorate, and then I went over here to another school, and you know, you put all these things on your job resume, and so you can hand it to the employers, and they look at that, and they said, hmm, man, this, you've got a lot of credits here, and then, then you open your mouth and you talk, and you can't speak English straight. <laughs> they said, <laughs> that don't work. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a proficiency in Greek, but I don't show it to anybody. Because I'm not very proficient. <laughs> I mean, when I I can practice, but anyhow, I don't get the chance. So anyhow, but we've got to be careful about telling lies. If it's not pleasing to God, it's, it's just opening the door for darkness and bigger sins and sin separates us from God hallelujah and the scripture says be sure your sins will find you out what's done in secret will be shouted from the rooftop amen, amen. so when you think you're going to I can do this and nobody will know. It'll pop up on Facebook. <laughs> Somebody will say, hallelujah. Somebody will spill the beans on you or it will come out somewhere. But if it did, God knows. God knows your heart. How about your heart? Is it right with God? That's the thing that counts today. People often see you as you are outside. But Jesus really knows you. For He sees inside. How about your heart? Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to close with this illustration. You know, tears... God loves tears, but you know there's different kinds of tears. There's tears we call crocodile tears. The crocodile, after he eats you, he cries. They call them crocodile tears. You don't really mean them. And the Bible says there is worldly sorrow sorrow of this world worketh death but godly sorrow worketh repentance so you have to even don't lie by what kind of tears you shed <laughs> you're lying those aren't sorrowful tears for the repentance of godly tears those are worldly tears no oh. People cry because they got caught. Got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> Mama, what she doing there? That's the way I live my wife. My wife snoops on me all the time. If I get up from my chair, she says, where are you going? <laughs> I crawl out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's only one place I'm going, but she says, where are you going, honey? <laughs> she counts the cookies. <laughs> make sure I didn't get one. <laughs> that, I, I guess I lied. <laughs> But I just enjoy picking on my wife so much. 
But you know, it's it's, it's kind of like that, though. You know, uh, you got to just be careful. Be careful the lies what you see. Oh, be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little tongue what you say. There's a father up above. Look it down in tender love. Be careful. Be careful. How about your heart today? There was a father that had a son. And he loved his son so much. But for some reason his son and he got into a fight. And his son ran away from home. And he said, oh, Paco was his name. Paco. I think this was in Portugal. And he said, oh, Paco will come home. One day went by, two days went by, three days went by, no Paco. He got worried. He went searching around trying to find his boy. We couldn't find his boy. Finally, in desperation, he went to the newspaper and he said, I want to take out an ad. And I want to put a big ad. I want to pay a lot of money. A lot of pesos for this ad. They said, uh, they said well, why do you want to write on it? And I want you to write, Paco, please come home. Father forgives you. Meet me in a certain square at this certain place, coffee shop. And so the day arrived when he was supposed to show up at the coffee shop in the Platia. And so the father, he thought he would get there and he'd have to look around and try and find his son. And it was hard because when he got there, he hollered out, Paco! Paco, please say it, Paco! I love it. About 90% of the people in that square come running. I'm Paco, I'm Paco, I'm pa all the Pacos. Because he didn't specify the last name. <laughs> and it just goes to show you how many people are sick in their hearts and have problems in their hearts. Have a little bitterness here or there, a little jealousy, hate, envy, strife. You know, if you have a cloak and somebody likes your cloak, say, boy, I like that shirt. Or they like that tie. Hey, Amen. You got two, give them one. Give it to them. Let's not have any of that, what you call that, covetousness. Hey, Amen. But let's, let's be warm. Let's love one another. Let us not provoke anybody to wrath or to jealousy or to hate or anything of that nature. If you have been invited to be a leader in some department or something, don't flaunt that as though, hey, look at me. I'm, you know, if, if I catch you, you're fired. But... <laughs> But do the job. Love the people. Love the people in your department. In your Bible group. So, will we stand together today?